Yeah, Route 3 is a nice, long, straight road for the most part. I'll call out potholes as we come across. All right. That's, 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 that'll be fun. Help. We'll have Director Alvidi watching it. <laughs> here you go, sir. Hey, welcome to Carpooling with Ben. I love this organization for simply their motto. It's let me be brave in the attempt. It, it just, it, it speaks so much volume to what they do and their whole mission at Special Olympics Rhode Island. And they're supported in a number of different ways. One of the biggest is their annual plunge, which is coming up. But there's a group of people who are, I don't want to say crazy, because most of them are law enforcement officials, and I have all the utmost respect for them. They're kind of crazy. Joining me is one of the least craziest guys, Chief of the Richmond, Rhode Island Police Department, Chief Elwood Johnson. Chief. Pleasure. You're going to jump in the ocean 24 times in 24 hours. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. The older I get, the colder I get. And the first year that I did it was 2013. And on paper, it looked great. You had 24 lines. This is the time I'll go in. Here's what I need to bring. When you actually execute it, it's a living, breathing event for 24 hours. It's sleep deprivation, which I gotta be honest, is probably one of the hardest parts. Yeah. And your body's going to extreme cold to extreme warmth 24 times in those cycles. Sure. So uh, the great thing is it becomes this, and I think we talked about this before, this living, breathing event for you know basically two days. Yeah. So it's not one and done and now potential fun raising dollars are lost because people didn't even know it happened yeah. it, it draws attention it's shocking yeah it, is, it is crazy right <laughs> so yeah. it tends to draw people's attention and we try to steer that attention towards why we're doing it right i don't do it because i like you know diving into narragansett bay at one in the morning when it's pitch black and the tide's going out and the shore is actually icing up because of the temperatures sure um i don't do that because i enjoy swimming at night it's because I care about the athletes at Special Olympics and their families, and, and I have seen people's lives change through well, we, this program. We talk about this organization because they they really do, and, you know, folks, the stats are there uh, to prove that when, I think, is it 3,900 athletes just in Rhode Island? That, that's I mean, a good ballpark. It's yeah. over 3,000. I think it's yeah. over 3,500 now. Yeah. Um, just the stats are there that when these people get involved with Special Olympics, that their confidence goes through the roof. They have purpose, they have drive, somebody is there encouraging them. And really the life skills beyond that, that they learn and are, are just incredible. Why do you think law enforcement in particular has gravitated in such a powerful way? I mean, let, let's get, let, let be honest, I mean, there, there's, rare cause that you guys don't get involved with guys mm -hmm. and girls but specifically special olympics you guys really gravitate and go huge for it. well it started with the torch run program back in 1981 with chief lamunion and he's the one that started the torch run in support of special olympics but for us who volunteer i started volunteering back in 89 as a uniform trooper presenting medals at the state summer games. You were in the Rhode Island State Police? Yes. Okay, yep. And what I witnessed there, what I experienced was so tangible and real and moved me so much. I was so inspired by what I saw that I was hooked up to that. And that's what happens with most of those volunteers. Law enforcement, you know, you have a lot of, unfortunately, have a lot of confrontation or, you know, adverse contacts with members of the public. And by that, I don't mean that we go in with a bad attitude. Um, it's just that some of the things that we have to do and we're required to do are when people are in their most vulnerable point in their life, whether it's a domestic and you're going into a family situation where everybody's upset, some people are impaired, and they see you taking a family member out in handcuffs. You know, it's not something that we want to do. It's something that we need to do to protect the people in there. Sure. Um, but that, that's kind of, a, and it takes a toll on police officers. So yeah. when you can do something positive in somebody's life, like volunteering for Special Olympics, and you see how much it changes attitudes and behaviors of other people. Um, you think about this, you have 
moms and dads who dream about the birth of their first child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are they going to have your eyes? Are they going to have my eyes? Are they going to be a successful doctor? Are they going to be an attorney? Uh, will they go to our school? And then you're told that your child has a birth defect or, or is going to be born with intellectual disability. It's human nature to, to initially feel like, why us? Why me? Sure. You know, they wouldn't have chosen to have a child who was going to suffer, you know, physical ailments and, and struggle just to be able to fit in, to be excluded. I mean, it, it's a nightmare. But the reality is when a person with intellectual disabilities is born into a family, I have seen this almost in every single case they become the blessing to the family. They become the greatest teacher. And, and the, the athletes, every single one of them have inspired us, taught us what really is important in life, the value of things. You know, we get our own priorities mixed up because we're all trying to do too much. And, we, and the real substance of life is lost on us because I think we have limited vision. You get an athlete, you get a person with intellectual disabilities, it's about celebrating that moment. It's about living in that moment. It's about camaraderie with peers. It's about networking and, and just enjoying life, no matter what place you finish in. I mean, powerful. You, you, you hit it spot on and the, the self-confidence that you guys it, you just inspire and uh, not only the athletes themselves, but their families and just that moment of, of well-earned pride and, and, and excitement. You're right, you guys and girls go far beyond, you know, down at the games, at all the events, you guys go so far beyond to make sure that the focus is on them, give them all the pomp and circumstance they deserve. Uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. I just want to say this too, you know, you, you said why law enforcement? We are loved and welcomed and adored by Special Olympics athletes unconditionally. It's, I have seen, you know, grown men, 6'5", gruff, and, and really not outgoing, melt yeah. after an athlete hugs them. Sure. Because it's so real. Yeah. And it, it's so genuine. And you forge these relationships uh, that you're drawn to it. That's well stated. I mean, very well stated. It, 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 it's, you, you've lived it. You've, you've been there from the state police side now as, uh, as the chief on a local municipal uh, it's it's awesome. It's, it, it, it is the best example of humanity I've ever seen nice. in person, and, and it's not one and done. It's not an isolated. I'm saying that this is a theme with Special Olympics and the people that are involved with it. And that goes for the the athletes themselves, their families, and then the volunteers and the staff at Special Olympics. Just amazing people. Some of the most inspirational moments in my life have been through this program as a volunteer. Wow. So the date is. March 23rd, March 24th, there is still time for people to sign up for uh, the the plunge on the 24th. The team is assembled for the Super Plunge, though, yes. and people can make a donation. Talk to me just about the process, because it, it kicks off on the Saturday with the, is it the Unified Plunge? It's the Unified Plunge. Okay, and then how does it progress throughout the evening, all night long? <laughs> do you so, play? Do you play that? Uh, you know, Lionel Richie. All night long. <laughs> all night. All night. That's a great song, by the way. <laughs> I'm kind of nostalgic for those old tunes, but no, we don't play that. We actually play Jaws on a loop on a TV. Oh, that's great. There's a 60-inch screen TV in the shelter that we have. Yeah. Helps you get in and get out. Contribution by Bo Matthews, one of our plungers. <laughs> I just, it's, we love that movie, and yeah, sure. it's incentive to run out of the water. So fantastic, fantastic. But it starts with the unified plunge. You unified guys go. plunge at noon. Like Pontiac's at high school has a great choose to include program, and they are just, they are like all geared up for it. They they're wearing uh, like war paint and uh, they just get this program and they really are great ambassadors for it in the high schools so uh, our super plunge our first plunge starts at 1 p.m. okay and then 2 p.m. 3 p.m. on into the night as the temperatures drop and the tide goes out and the wind chills pick up and then we go till next day at 12 noon our last plunge and then the big torture room plunge with all the plungers it's uh, public safety uh, volunteers are there and you've got their families and friends families and friends from special olympics we've got athletes that plunge i mean the, the coolest thing you know i started this event by myself in 2013 
Um, and it was the night before, the day before the, the torture on Plymouth. But I had gotten the idea from other states that had done it through uh, another volunteer, Ken Lito. This thing has grown now, we have 22 plungers. Yeah. And the amount of funds raised, the awareness piece is just, it is beyond my, my imagination at the time that it would grow this big, this quickly. Sure. It went from one to four to five, to teens to now 22. And each one of these people is raising anywhere from you know two thousand dollars up to fifteen or thirty thousand dollars. That's incredible. And you know the coolest thing is that our captain on our team, and we designate him that because he deserves it, is Mike Bullock, and he's an athlete with Special Olympics. Wow. And he's total inspiration. You know, it's human nature for us to whine about things that are uncomfortable. Sure. It's cold. I'm miserable. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm miserable. Mike's always like, all right, guys, let's go do our next plunge. <laughs> the, the, the first year he did it was the worst year we had for temperatures. It dropped down to minus 14 overnight with wind chills. So I don't know if people can appreciate that, but imagine walking out into the night air, uh, 1 a.m., yeah. pitch black, yeah. flashlight. You can see your breath and your body's trembling just from taking a shirt off and you're dry. Yeah. Now you're going into the water, complete submersion. You have to go all the way under. Sure. You dive in, you come out, and now you feel like your head is in a vice grip. I mean, it's that painful. It's just a constant ache in your head. Now you've forgotten about your body. You don't even care. Yeah. Wrap a towel around your head and then run to the shelter. And the shelter is 34, 35 degrees inside, but it feels like a sauna because you're out of the wind. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Imagine doing that and, and not complaining. That's what Mike Bullock is. He, he is just a phenomenal person. And uh, it's great to have an athlete on our team. So. Well, that's, that's so great. Folks, if you want to get involved with this, there's a few options. A, write a check or go online. You guys have a great website set up there. We'll link it right in the description of the great. show notes Thank here. you. And people can make a donation to the entire team. You can find Chief Johnson. You can find any of the other members if you want to help any of them raise their funds there. Uh, shout out to my buddy, retired Chief Bill <laughs> Zeal. Good great, guy. Great man. He's a great guy. <laughs> he was good. He was white knuckled the entire You talk time about crazy. There's a guy that was like posting <laughs> videos of himself jumping into snowbanks in his backyard in preparation for the plunge. He uh, he, he knows the meaning of, of, of preparation and crazy. He's very good at that. I yeah. think he even did one up in Maine through the ice just to get him ready for that as well. Yeah, so. he's doing a plunge every weekend in March this year. Wow. In That's advance a, of the super plunge. Wim Hof will be proud of him. So He's he's got a brother-in-law uh, who's an athlete in the program. Randy. Bill, yep. Bill gets it. Yep. I mean, he is just yep. totally dedicated. Randy is a, Randy is an awesome man. He is. Awesome yeah, man. Yeah, smile right just, up the uh, whole room. Totally, totally dedicated to what he's doing there. And... Uh, and, and, and the whole team in general. If you want to learn more about them, go right online. You can follow the links, make a donation. Or if you want to be part of the Big Plunge on Sunday, sign up. Get your sponsors in line. you got plenty of time to do it, folks. And join the Super Plungers for the final plunge on Sunday at noon right down there in Narragansett. Become uh, part of it, and I promise you it will be one of the best moves in your entire life. Because we're all looking for inspiration, sure. right? We're all looking for a reason to, or a group to be part of. This is one that will never let you down. It's nothing but positive, positive experiences and attitudes. And I challenge you afterwards to never go to a Special Olympics event <laughs> again in your life. It right. won't happen. You'll be at every one. Uh, and they have great events throughout the year. They have a wonderful staff, a wonderful board here in Rhode Island, even throughout New England, across the country. It is truly an organization that just inspires greatness it is uh, worldwide truly yeah. truly global i just went out to chicago this past july to celebrate the 50th anniversary of oh, special, wow. special olympics at soldiers field and i gotta tell you you don't appreciate how big this thing is until you travel outside of the state and see what it's done for those programs as well and it's uh it's a movement worth getting involved in that's awesome. Chief, hey, as always, pleasure. thank you for joining me on the Thanks, ride. guys, for not interrupting. There you go. They're, Nick they're, they're very good, absolutely. They've, <laughs> they've got their snow gear on, the new uh, the new edition of the, uh, the Cardi plushie. <laughs>